This recording is to demonstrate how you adjust, how you load curves, save curves, and uh, adjust them. And I'm going to color print, and I'm going to activate the folder that I want the curve to be applied to. And actually, I double click on it, brings up the different attributes, and I'm going to click on the tab, or the adjust tab at the top here. And you see this has no curve applied to it at all. This is uh, the, the RIP's um, default. Anytime you buy a printer, um, you're going to have um, some halftone curve or tonal adjustments to the color print or to the halftone print. Um, you should be able to find somewhere where you can adjust the tone of the print. And in our machine, uh, we do that through adjust under the um, attributes folder. There's no curve in here. That means there's no dot gain compensation going on. So what we do is we have a standard curve. That would be uh, the 8060 curve. And this basically just opens up the shadow tones a little bit. If you can imagine, this is 0% and then 1 and 2 and on up to 50 and then 75 and then up to 100 percent so this represents the mid-tone range of a point from point A being 0 percent and point B being 100 percent so this is the distance and this is the height percentage range or the mid-tone range so what we're going to do is we want to make some compensation. Here um, are your load and your save buttons. And when you make a change, let's say 8060, and you want to save it, you click on save, and then it'll take you to the default folder. Now, if you change this, change your location of where you want to save it, it'll take you to that folder. But by default, it goes into the programs 86 color print, uh, whatever version you might have, into the density folder, and then into the printer setup for this particular machine you have. And in this case, this is GTWR uh, reverse printing 25 by 36 Gen 4. And these are the different curves that I've saved. Here I just give it a name. New 8060. And click Save. So it's going to go there all the time. Anytime I need to change a curve, I will click on Load. If I want to bring up a curve that I've already used. Where this might apply is if you have a halftone curve with detail in it with a lot of dot gain compensation. It'll give you great halftone prints, but let's say you are doing a reorder. You don't want to use the new detailed halftone curve on a reorder because it's going to make the print too light uh, in comparison to what you did on your previous maybe film printer or director screen device. Uh, so we'll click on load here. It'll say curve has been changed. Do you want to load? Yes. And then I find my uh, curve I want to load in. And I'm going to choose this one. This is one that I've saved with some adjustments. And I take a look at that. And you see it's much different than the straight curve going across. You can see here I've got a little bump. And that takes my um, my 1% up to a 2%. And so that helps me hold finer halftones. Um, if you were to double hit this, then you would see that 2% becoming 3% or maybe even 4%. And... Um, we're very close to that and they sometimes start to look like the fade drops off it's too big of a dot so in these cases you want to make sure you don't hit double hit 
something like this if you have um, your 1% range bumped up a little bit so that you can hold those half tones. Then you have a slight slight bump here. Um, based on the output of the device, uh, I've found that um, you want a slight bump in this area. And it's a very gradual, smooth bump. Harsh bumps will create, this is an extreme example, but a harsh bump will create in a smooth gradation, it'll create a dark spot where it becomes, where it's, um, you know, here it's 48% uh, or 14%. And then as it gets dot gain, it, um, you know, it's going to be heavier. But here in your next step, it's going to be three times heavier. Um, so you don't want that to happen. You want a nice smooth transition. And for some shops, this might be an extreme. And this is why I don't claim that a single curve will work for every shop because every shop prints differently. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what works for printer B is not going to work for printer A. Uh, it'll work, but might they might tweak it or might make it you know, heavier or lighter, depending on how they print. But this is an extreme example. You want to open up these shadow tones greatly so that if you have a two head or a three head machine, uh, as those heads print overlap, print uh, over top of each other, forming more density, uh, you'll get a little bit more gain. Um, so you open up that shadow tone a little bit and compensate. And, um, so you're getting image density in this case, but you're also getting halftone detail, and that's what you want. So, um, you know, another curve anywhere in this area where it's opened up is not going to be a wrong curve. It's just going to be adjusted for your shop. So you might tweak this a little bit and find that you like something like this and not so opened up in the shadow tones. Some printers like to print a little heavier uh, to maybe have the colors more bold, lay down heavier. Um, so you might have something like that. So then you click on Save, and then you give it a new name, New Er Detail Curve. Or you can name them detail curve number one, number two, number three, and so on, until you find something you like. Click on Save. So once you're done, you click Apply and OK. Now, now you have a new curve applied to this folder. You want to then load in a halftone test and start to do some comparisons because you want to rip a file with the new curve and come back in and load up your old curve MNR default and you click apply and uh, OK and now you add job and click on a test uh, I'm just I'm just throwing something in there randomly but uh, you click on a test. Let's say this is your halftone test and you want to see the detail and and you really want to have a smooth gradation in here. <coughs> you want to have a smooth gradation so you can see what it's doing to your gradations. So you rip that and then you go into print production and you load that and you want to see what it's doing to the halftone curves. Um, let me load that see what it's doing to the halftone curves um, with each different application, each different tweak. And when you save it, you want to um, load it in here and flip back and forth between the two by clicking on them. When this is done loading, you'll see. Um, then you can get a really good idea of what this is doing. Now, <coughs> also mind you that 
when you preview in here on screen this is the raw data so it's not showing you dot gain what it's going to do when it gets onto your screen and it's not showing you what it's going to do when it gets onto your press so it's going to look lighter than it will when it hits your screen so you can click on here and view up you see the halftone percentages um, I like to you know this is this magnifier is just looking for uh, problem areas like half tones up in this area where you don't want um, but let's just say um, you know we click off that for a second and you want to load this job in again using the other curve so that's got one curve applied to it which was the uh, 80 60 curve now we want to load in the detail curve and see how much that makes a difference in your gradations and you'll see how one compares to the other so now you've loaded that job that you've made that change and I'm going to load this very same job in there if that was the one I think it is yes same thing so this is the same job but it's getting ripped differently with the new curve and you really can't see the the preview differences in here in color print color print its preview positioning is really only for positioning and um, confirming that you have the right number of colors coming through so let's go into print production we'll see this loading in here and I'm just gonna click on when you click on a folder it shows you the first color in the list for example it's showing me the cyan so and you can see it listed over here <clears throat> there we go so when you compare the two look how different they are see this is filling in here but you might want shadow detail in here by the time this gets depressed you're going to see that it's um, this area down here would fill in more not not so much this but over here in the dark areas that's you know it's like 90 percent solid there uh so somewhat and by the time it hits press it's going to fill in so if you want image detail and shadow tones then you want to compensate and adjust it so that it looks kind of like this so this is what the curves do they open up your half tones they give you content in the highlights a little bit more than um, what you might normally have on film you know this is a, a, a compensation area so that you can start to uh, get more accurate prints uh, good halftone phase and whatnot and the only way to test this to make sure that this is 100 percent accurate that your 50 percent is 50 percent on press you know and your 25 percent are 25 percent on press the only way to do that is with a densitometer and re uh, reflective and transmissive densitometer you would zero out to the shirt color uh, to uh, get a good read based off of uh, the whiteness of the shirt then you read the darkness of your halftones the percentages and you see what those are in isolated areas that are marked 25%, 30%, 35%. And then you take that information back to your setup in uh, color print in here under your adjust. And you read the 50% and you read what it says on the shirt. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, that's in there. Um, on the shirt it might read that your 50% is actually reading at 
because I've got adjusted already, it might be reading at um, 45 or you know 48 percent. So you just um, add the numbers in there and compensate and build that back up to be more accurate, so that when it lands on press, you're uh, you're very close. Um, you're never oh, you're never going to be uh, dead on all across the board um, repeatedly consistently because unless you have all of your variables along the way controlled such as um, your or your emulsion uh, over mesh ratio um, the EOM um, emulsion EOM um, things like that um, the number of coats the exposure time, the uh, the type of emulsion, the screen mesh used, the tension on the mesh used, um, the squeegee type, the print stroke speed, the angle, all of those things play an effect on the percentages of how this look. So that's why you're never going to really get consistent unless you have all those variables controlled. And having those controlled takes a lot of work. So it's um, it's something that uh, is not easily achieved, and especially not all the time. Um, but for those shops that do, they uh, they are more efficient. They run smoothly. They repeat jobs, um, you know, that uh, need to look consistent from reorder to reorder, and um, they're mostly retail oriented type shirts type designs and um, you know that get, re get reordered often and that is um, a time when you need to control all the variables um, everybody wants to control all the variables as often as they can but you know it's um, it's a question of how much time do you spend on controlling the variables and is it necessary for the types of customers that you have. You know, if you're doing a baseball team and you, most of your orders are 12 to 24 shirts, you don't need to focus on making your um, your images that accurate to the point where it costs you production time. So uh, for other shops, you may need to do that. Um, so that's really it in a nutshell as to how you adjust curves and why. And uh, that's that one. Thank you very much.